This is my hack for a beautiful I-cord cast on without that elongated first row of stitches that you usually get. You're going to start out with a teeny tiny needle like a US 1 or a 0 and cast on three stitches using the backwards loop method. Turn your work and with your working needle you're going to knit two stitches and then into that last stitch knit front and back to increase a stitch. It's going to make it a little bit looser and sloppy but you can tighten it up with your yarn tail. Just pull that until it's nice and tight. Now slip those four stitches back onto your teeny tiny needle. Make sure that that last stitch you knit is pulled nice and tight so it won't be too elongated. Now you're going to knit three stitches onto your working needle. That's the needle that you're going to use for the rest of your garment. Now yarn over from back to front over the top of the needle and in between those, both those two needles and slip your stitches, all those four stitches, back onto your teeny tiny needle. And then you'll be repeating these steps to the end until you have the number of stitches you wish cast on plus three for the I-cord. So for each stitch you want cast on, there's going to be that backwards yarn over and those three stitches that you're working all the way along the bottom, those are your I-cord and they do not count as cast on stitches. So this is shown in continental style right here. And here it is in English style and that is what the yarn held in the right hand. You can see you just knit the first three stitches and then to add a stitch to your cast on, you are going to do that backwards yarn over. So it's going to go from the back over the top of your working needle and then between both needles and to the back. Now slip those four stitches back onto your teeny tiny needle and continue to cast on in this manner to the end. At the end, you will have three I-cord stitches left over and then on your tiny needle, you'll have the cast on stitches that you're going to work for the rest of your garment. This method works because it keeps the I-cord stitches nice and lengthened and that makes the cast on stretchy while it minimizes the stitches cast on to be used for the rest of your garment. Remember that the cast on stitches will present with the right leg in back and the left leg in front. So on the first row that you work after casting on, you will be working the stitches through the back loop to keep them from twisting. The I-cord stitches themselves can be bound off if you're working flat or continued up the side. Or if you're working in the round as for mitts like these, you can put a pin through those three live I-cord stitches and at the very end, graph them together with the original cast on row to make a really nice unbroken edging. I love how neat and tidy it looks. I hope you do too.